This is tutorial T2, session 3C of the 29th European Signal Processing Conference. This session will present an overview of the RFSOC Spectrum Analyzer tool. Welcome to this session on an overview of the RFSOC Spectrum Analyzer. In the following slides, RF Spectrum Analysis will be introduced. Then, the Zoom Fast Fourier Transform will be explained. The mapping of the Zoom FFT to the RFSOC device will then be explored. Later, the Spectrum Analyzer system architecture will be described and the development tools required to design the Spectrum Analyzer will be investigated. Finally, the key features of the Spectrum Analyzer will be summarized and then this session will conclude. RF spectrum analysis can be performed using Fourier analysis to break down a waveform into a sum of sinusoids or sine waves. This technique can analyse a radio signal over a range of different frequencies. For digital systems, the discrete Fourier transform is preferred, as it will obtain the frequency spectrum of a sampled digital signal. By exploiting periodicity optimizations, the DFT can be efficiently computed using a variety of fast Fourier transform techniques also known as the FFT. For instance, a popular FFT technique is the Radix 2 FFT, which operates on a discrete time domain signal that has a power of 2 in length. The FFT operates on a discrete signal that has been acquired at some sample frequency, denoted as FS. The number of data points used in the FFT is the same as the length of the time domain signal. This is denoted as N. When applying the FFT to a time domain signal, the frequency resolution of the FFT is equal to the sampling frequency divided by the FFT length. To improve the spectral resolution of the frequency domain, the sample frequency of the time domain signal should be reduced or the number of FFT data points need to be increased. Increasing the FFT length can be computationally expensive. An effective technique for efficiently improving the spectral resolution of the FFT is known as the Zoom FFT. This technique reduces the sample frequency of the time domain signal rather than increasing the FFT length to improve the spectral resolution. The RFSOC Spectrum Analyzer tool uses a mixer approach to implementing the Zoom FFT. The mixer approach initially shifts the band of interest to 0 Hz or DC using a mixer or numerically controlled oscillator. The signal is then decimated to reduce its overall sampling frequency. Finally, the FFT is applied to the decimated signal. The overall spectral resolution will improve as the sample frequency has been reduced. An example of the Zoom FFT is now shown. Assuming that a complex signal is used, the Zoom FFT can be applied in three simple stages. At stage 1, the mixer frequency is selected that will shift the band of interest to 0 Hz. As shown, this mixer frequency is labelled as the centre frequency. At stage 2, the band of interest has been shifted to 0 Hz using a mixer. At stage 3, decimation is applied to the signal to reduce the overall sample frequency and improve the spectral resolution of the FFT. The Zoom FFT can be effectively mapped to the RFSOC device. Consider an RFADC block which consists of a fine mixer and half-band decimation stages. The band of interest can be shifted to 0 Hz using the RFSOC's fine mixer. Then the signal can undergo several decimation stages to reduce its sample frequency by a factor of 8. The signal then interfaces to the FPGA logic fabric. To increase the decimation factor and the corresponding spectral resolution, further decimation stages can be implemented in the RFSOC's programmable logic. A fairly straightforward approach is to cascade several half-band decimation filters in the RFSOC's programmable logic. The user can then change the sample rate during runtime by selecting the appropriate tap from the cascade of filters. This now leads on to a complete system diagram of the RFSOC Spectrum Analyzer tool. To begin, the signal is acquired at the RFADC block 
and has frequency shifted depending on the requested center frequency of the spectrum analyzer. The signal is decimated using the RFADC decimation filters and the flexible decimator in the FPGA logic fabric. Both decimation filters are runtime configurable, meaning the decimation factor can be changed while the system is operational. The system implements a pre-processing window in the FPGA logic fabric. The pre-processing window is essential for suppressing unwanted frequency spurs and spectral leakage. The user can program the windowing architecture with traditional coefficients such as a Blackman or Hamming window. Custom coefficients can also be implemented. FFT core processing is implemented in the FPJ logic fabric so that it may be hardware accelerated. There are several FFT cores of different lengths in the FFT core processing block. Spectrum post processing is also implemented in the FPJ logic fabric. In particular, floating point arithmetic is deployed to obtain accurate frequency measurements. Finally, a triple buffer technique is used to write the output frequency domain frames to external memory. The processing system can access external memory and obtain these frames as required. Now we will investigate several tools that were used to design the Spectrum Analyzer's hardware architecture. A video will now play showing these development tools and several of the FPGA designs. System Generator is a model-based design tool developed by Xilinx for the MathWorks Simulink environment. Fundamentally, System Generator is a library of HDL-optimized arithmetic blocks, which can be connected together to form larger digital architectures. The Spectrum Analyzer requires a flexible decimation FPG architecture for dynamically changing the sample rate of an acquired RF signal. System Generator is an ideal candidate for prototyping this design due to its dedicated library of supersample rate blocks and optimal finite impulse response architectures, also known as FIRs. Since System Generator uses the MathWorks tools, we can also use the Simulink library and MATLAB workspace to create stimulus and analyze architecture results. Returning now to the challenge of creating a flexible decimation architecture, the solution is rather straightforward. We will simply create a cascade of FIR half-band decimation filters to efficiently decrease the sample rate of our design. As you can see, these FIR filters are implemented using system generator blocks, namely the FIR compiler. Each FIR compiler decimates the signal by a factor of 2, halving the signal sample frequency per stage. The FIR compiler has a great number of interesting properties that can be configured by the user. However, today we will not include this in our discussion. After designing the cascade of half-band FIR decimation filters, we simply create a switch that will allow us to select between different points in the filter cascade. Now that we have designed our architecture, we can simply add Axis Stream interfaces to the input and output of our design. This will simplify the connection of our architecture when later moving to Vivado IP Integrator. One of the primary advantages of using System Generator is the MathWorks Simulink environment. We can use native Simulink blocks in the MATLAB workspace to create stimulus for our design. The blocks currently on screen are being used to simulate the RF data converter technology used in the RF SOC. With these blocks, we can accurately simulate our entire system to ensure that it will respond correctly before targeting hardware. Finally, when we are happy with our design, we can run a simulation. The Simulink environment has a great deal of plotting and display mechanisms that will allow us to ensure our design works correctly. Included is a very simple logic analyzer for tapping into portions of our design. Once we are happy with the simulation results, we can simply generate an IP core using the system generator interface shown on screen. The design of this flexible decimator was really that straightforward and fast. This design was rapidly completed in one or two hours. MathWorks HDL Coder is another excellent tool for designing and developing HDL architectures. Similar to System Generator, MathWorks HDL Coder is a block-based design tool containing a vast library of HDL-optimized blocks for custom user designs. A significant appeal of using HDL Coder is its excellent simulation performance. This allows designers to rapidly perform tests and produce results. 
The Spectrum Analyzer hardware architecture design using the HDL coder is shown on screen. As shown, the design has control stimulus to the left, a DDR memory block at the top, and the main design under test, the Spectrum Analyzer, in the center. A significant advantage of using HDL Coder for model-based design is its ability to model external memory interfaces. Since the Spectrum Analyzer is going to be moving FFT frames off-chip into external memory, this aspect of model-based design is particularly appealing. Without going into too much detail, we will now explore some of the work that has been carried out to create the Spectrum Analyzer design. Drilling down into the design hierarchy, we can see several of the Spectrum Analyzer's features. The first is the Super Sample Rate Converter, or SSR Converter. As shown, the SSR Converter uses primitive HDL coder blocks to manipulate the incoming signal. Moving on, we can see the reprogrammable window design. This particular feature requires a direct memory access controller to move data from external memory into an on-chip block RAM. The block RAM is then accessed to apply windowing to an incoming data stream using a simple multiplication. Next, the FFT core is shown, where there are several FFT blocks of varying sizes implemented. Each of these FFT blocks are switched between one another at runtime to create FFT frames of different lengths. Finally, we have an example of spectrum post-processing. This is where the signal is conditioned for its power spectral density, units, and conversion to log. This particular architecture uses HDL Coder's native floating point library to produce accurate results. Once our FFT frame is ready, it is finally sent to a custom direct memory access core that will transfer the frame to external memory using a triple buffer technique. Using similar techniques as System Generator, the HDL Coder Spectrum Analyzer design can be validated in simulation. When we are happy with the design, we can generate an IP core for integration in Vivado IP Integrator. The HDL Coder Workflow Advisor allows us to quickly generate and configure an IP core. Now that our primary IP cores are ready, we can move to Vivado to create our IP integrator design. As shown, our design begins by creating a radio hierarchy. This will store the RF data converter IP core and the transmit and receive design for our spectrum analyzer. Drilling down into this hierarchy, we can see two new hierarchies and the RF data converter IP core. The data converter IP core is used to communicate with the RF ADC and RF DAC blocks on our RF SOC chip. The transmitter is responsible for creating stimulus for the RF DACs. Drilling down into the receiver hierarchy, we can see that it contains two channels. Each channel will be used to host the Spectrum Analyzer module and flexible decimation IP core. As shown, these IP cores are easily connected using the AXIS standard. Now that the IP integrator design is complete, a bitstream can be generated and a hardware handoff file created for moving to the PINK software framework. Let's now summarize the key features of the RFSOC Spectrum Analyzer tool. The Spectrum Analyzer is able to inspect 2 GHz of instantaneous bandwidth. This bandwidth is possible as the RFADC is operating at 4 GB samples per second. The inspection range of the analyzer is between 0 and 4 GHz. Although 2 GHz of bandwidth can be inspected at one time, Using second-order Nyquist zone techniques allows the inspection range to increase from 2 GHz to 4 GHz. The Spectrum Analyzer has adaptive bandwidth control and center frequency selection by using the RFADC's fine mixer, decimation stages and further decimation stages in the RFSOC's programmable logic. The Analyzer features reprogrammable windowing, hardware floating point processing, and uses PINK to handle hardware control and interfacing from software. As you will see in the next session, the Plotly Python library is used to visualize the spectrum and waterfall plot. We are now at the end of this session where RF spectrum analysis and the Zoom FFT were investigated. The Zoom FFT was mapped to the RFSOC device, the spectrum analyzer architecture was presented, and the Xilinx and MathWorks development tools were explored. Finally, the key features of the RFSOC Spectrum Analyzer tool were described.